Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Speaking Tree Facebook Live with me, Shweta. The last three years have been difficult for all of us. Owing to COVID-19, we all have suffered, either physically or emotionally. However, what does not kill us makes us stronger. There is light at the end of the tunnel. To talk more about how to heal yourself emotionally and spiritually and navigate through life's most challenging times, we have Dr. Sharda Batra today with us today. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Namaste. Welcome, everybody. Yes. Dr. Batra is a medical specialist, healer, and teacher of Vedic chants and Patanjali Yoga Sutras. She conducts individual and group sessions to facilitate an integrated understanding uh, of the use of uh, Vedic <laughs> tools to the path of yoga and self-transformation. Before starting the discussion, uh, I would request viewers to ask their questions in the comment sections below. So let us have a detailed conversation uh, with Dr. Batra today. So about spiritual healing, uh, both internal and external through Vedic chants. So welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ma'am, uh, I would like to start with the, our first question, which is, what is the science behind uh, chanting mantras and how does this really work? So, Shweta, I'll take your permission to first chant with a small invocation. Yes. <laughs> we'll start with a small invocation and I'll remember your question and I'll come to that. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so, we'll start with a, uh, generally one starts with a Ganpati invocation. So, we'll do a small little mantra and then we'll sure. start. This okay. is to invoke Ganpati, which is the cosmic energy which removes obstacles, especially when you're trying to learn something and learn the Vedas. Okay. Om <clears throat> Gananantva Ganapati Gung Hava Mahe Kavinka Vinam Pamashavastamam Jeshtharajam Brahmanam Brahmanaspata Anashrinban <coughs> Nuti Bhissi Dasadhanam Shri Mahaganapataye Namaha So with this chant we can start our discussion. Your question was the scientific basis is that what Yes, behind chanting mantras and how does this really work? Yeah, so, you know, like you started rightly that we've gone through a very turbulent phase, you know, with COVID and so many, uh, you know, collective uh, crises. We all went through a global crisis with this um, stress of corona and whatever. So this makes us yes. uh, search ourselves, okay? It makes us go deeper within ourselves. So what we realize is, so how do we, why do we use Vedic mantras, the scientific basis? Yes, there is the scientific, uh, scientific basis. And what is that? Science and Vedas are both mutually validating the fact that everything in the universe is energy. You agree with me? So everything yes. is energy, everything is vibrating. And because it is vibrating, there's a sound to it, a buzz to it. <clears throat> so everything right from a stone to a mountain, a river, a human being, a galaxy, everything is vibrating and has a sound to it. Yes. Sound basis or the energy basis is actually the start of what we are going to discuss today. So there is also a scientific theory, the unified energy field theory, which says that this energy which is forming the universe, you, me, and the whole universe, this energy is layered, it's in a hierarchy, okay? So from the large, that is the cosmos, to the smallest, that is, see, we are on Earth. So the cosmos, the universes, and then the galaxies, the solar system. So it comes in a step-down hierarchy. Similarly, in the human being also, we have our body, and then we have the mind, and everything then boils down to cells and atoms and subatomic so from the large to the small, right? All of this is energy. All of this is vibrating incessantly. <clears throat> so there's a vibration, right? Which uh, keeps us alive, which makes us function, right? This is, uh, so there's ample scientific evidence about this. In fact, vibrations are being used in diagnosis also, in therapy also. 
And there is a science called cymatics. So if you subject matter to a vibration and you examine it, the matter changes form. For example, if you take a plate of sand and you blow some sound or a mantra on it, it will form nice crystals and shapes. <clears throat> yes, patterns, yes. Yeah, so matter is responding to vibration. That's one. And recently, I think in 2018, there was a study called the Sanskrit effect <clears throat> in which there were some, uh, you know, Yajurve pandits, young boys who uh, were, you know, who chanted a lot. And then their MRIs were done and it was seen that the gray matter was more and, you know, their cognitive skills were heightened by this long-term chanting. There are many more evidences too. Yes, that how vibrations affecting the matter. The how, yeah, that, you know, what we see is matter. Yes. But let's take a disease. Every disease generally has a mind element. Okay. Either in the causation or in the prognosis, in the recovery. Mind element zarur hai, you know, in every disease. Similarly, if we go beyond the mind to something subtler, so body, mind, energy. So when we go to the energy aspect, we realize that actually the disease is appearing or originating in that invisible area of our beings, which is energy. Yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. You're absolutely right. So, but ma'am, there are still a lot of people that who chant these mantras orally, but they do not actually go through the process. They do not, I mean, why are they not able to, uh, even after chanting, not able to uh, shift their vibration to that uh, frequency? Yeah, because we need to understand it and do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you uh, if you chant a Vedic mantra, like uh, out of superstition or just as a blind belief, uh, it would still have a benefit, but if you understand the scientific basis, I think then you're more informed and wiser about how to use it. So why does, you know, that is the basic thing. Okay, the awareness of it all, so that what is the science behind it and the logic behind it, not just doing it, but doing it with a reason, the actual logic of Absolutely. So you used a very good word, awareness. So, you know, we need to be aware why is it that one person is expo exposed to COVID and gets it? The other person who's exposed doesn't get it. And a third person dies of it. <clears throat> maybe they were of the same age. Maybe they were of the same health status. But the outcome is very different. So why does this happen? Can you, can you guess? Maybe, as I said, uh, maybe one is aware and the other is not. Or the uh, ability to respond, the right? Yes, so the ability to respond mm -hmm. and the ability to fight back, the ability to tap in your own healing power depends on how well connected you are to the source. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you may be connected more intimately to the source, I may be connected a little less, and so on. And also, are we vibrating in alignment with the cosmic law of Dharma? It's see, like you have a law of gravitation, I drop something, it falls. Similarly, there is a law of dharma. That is, what is dharma? Dharma is the law which holds the whole universe together, not allowing it to disintegrate and fall, but keeping it together, alive, nourished. That is dharma. So if we vibrate according to that law, we also try to hold, uphold life. We also try to protect natural resources. Then we are in resonance. But if we are, say, um, <clears throat> You know, we don't realize the worth of life. Like in youngsters, there's suicide, drugs. Why does this happen? Because they lose the They're not resonating with the life force, right? <clears throat> so they don't, they have a low self-esteem. Similarly, murders, wars, all these are happening because you don't value the sanctity of life. Where is it coming from? From the human heart. What does it lead to? It leads to a cutting of the source. And finally, disease in that person who has this faulty alignment. This is the origin of disease, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That vibrating in that lower frequency, basically. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so, ma'am, let's move to the other question. Uh, yeah. How do yoga sutras uh, 
help a layman have a balanced life as uh, from yoga sutras how can we uh, have a learn the basic concepts of uh, living a healthy life so see yoga sutras are i think the most brilliant scientific exposition ever okay. yes they are yes they are these collection of 195 sutras which are very very concise written by maharishi patanjali now tell me what is the what is the aim of our life even if we want money we want health why do we want it you said health so <clears throat> why do we want to be healthy because we want basically everyone is searching for happiness isn't it yes we all yes yeah but we are looking for happiness uh, along the wrong paths okay so we are completely concentrated on the outer when actually it is all inside so yoga the yoga sutras give you a map it's like a map to your inner self and uh, it describes what is yoga so what is yoga what do you think yoga is uh <laughs> if we go into the word so yog means connection basically right yes. connection and uh, i have read some of yoga sutras so they talk about that practice and detachment so the word yog means you know the connection but at the same time it teaches us how to detach ourselves right yeah so that's wonderful you've given two contrary very interesting contrary aspects so yoga is like you said connection connection with what connection with your own self your own you know you are you shweta and everybody is a very layered person we have layers and layers of consciousness okay which we are not aware of at the deepest levels level we have so many secrets so many powers we carry them but we are not aware of them so how do we use them so yoga the term yoga means being aware of all aspects of your being being able to integrate them to get your true power and potential and then not just closing your eyes and sitting or doing an asana but then returning to life and expressing it in daily life so that you become more skilled more skilled more successful more powerful from within okay <clears throat> so the yoga yes 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 sorry the meditation is not only about just you know uh, sitting in a pose and just uh, i mean closing eyes but it is also about what we have uh, integrated the energy that we have integrated during the meditation uh, we have to know how to use it in the uh, you know in our daily practices when we how to express it as well because a lot of times we are not aware of how to express ourselves and either we misunderstand people or we have been misunderstood right yes absolutely so you know <clears throat> it's very natural for a human being to be jealous to be you know to have resentment it's very natural all of us have these negative emotions it's just a part of your chitta your mind so any amount of giving lectures to people to explaining you no know, aisa karo waisa karo you should be good you should forgive you know any amount of lectures will not work but if you really experience it from within then it will spring from within right so that is what patanjali also says you know that maitri karuna mudita and upeksha so the attitudes towards life come when actually your relationship with yourself is complete so it begins with the inner self like you rightly said right yes yes <clears throat> yeah we have uh, one very uh, you know very general question it is nowadays even kids get very stress so how do get our kids to uh, how can we get them to meditate okay so that's wonderful this is a good question and it's very relevant because you can see it in the children you know you can see it in the grown ups i mean the teenagers also that there is uh, there are issues because we are not uh concentrated on you know the truest education would be education of the self <clears throat> you know how to be happy as an independent uh being we are not taught that you know so we struggle later and then we need these terrible uh, crises like the covid crisis failing in an exam struggling in a new college all that helps you to you know search within 
So now how do we get children to meditate? Of course, you motivate them. You can start with some stories or uh, you can, you know, uh, make them chant Vedic mantras or you can also make them experience sitting and, uh, <clears throat> you know, keeping their back straight. These days, children are, of course, all children have always been very intelligent. They pick up very fast. So if you give them the motivation, tell them how to breathe and then give them an object to meditate on. Start with small capsules, maybe uh, take them through a creative visualization, walking in a garden or playing. <clears throat> so this, we are making them visualize something which they find delightful. And then we slowly take them towards meditation, which we, we also don't have to take them. They will blossom themselves. So we just have to give little, little, you know, uh, toffees and chocolates on the way. I don't mean literally. And the children mm -hmm. themselves will take to it. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I have also heard that, you know, children learn from uh, elders' actions, specifically their guardians' actions. So if uh, we as adults will do the rightest thing and meditate properly, so they will see us and learn from our actions, right? From parents' actions, right? Yes, and, yes, 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 yes. That too, that too. So, uh, so what is, how, uh, what is the right way of meditation? Is there any right way for all or everyone or is it or does it vary from person to person? So, uh, you know, why meditate? And what are we trying to do? What is, uh, what is Patanjali, uh, Maharshi Patanjali saying in those Yoga Sutras? He's talking about an eight-step process beginning with yama niyama, that is your lifestyle. You know, when you wake up, when you sleep, what you eat and how clean you are. So he starts with the basic, very common sense principles, lifestyle, and then goes on to asana, pratyahara, pranayama, and then concentration and meditation leading to samadhi. So these eight steps lead you to meditation, correct? What are these eight steps? They are not so important in themselves. They are important because they prepare you to meditate. You need a preparation to be able to meditate. <clears throat> and why are we doing this? We are doing this. You tell me. You know, you've read a lot. So, uh, do you also meditate, Shweta? Yes, ma'am. Not on a regular basis, but I try to uh, do it thrice or twice or thrice a week yeah so why do you think one what happens when you are trying to meditate or build up a meditative practice why are you doing it are you doing it for peace of mind are you doing it why, why are you doing it uh, when i meditate so what happens i uh, i actually get i make try to still my body my mind which is actually affecting basically slowing down the number of thoughts in my mind because there are going to be thoughts in our mind and it is very difficult to just get thoughtless, you know. So during meditation, what I try to do to slow down my uh, number of thoughts and instead of going with them, I try to observe them and uh, see them just from a, from a place of, try to uh, observe them from a place of detachment, just how they are and I'm not that feeling or that thought. So that's... Yeah what I try to do. Yeah. So you see the mind is actually by nature very uh, restless, no? You notice? Yeah, it is. It is, of course. Creating thoughts all the time, very volatile, very dispersed. So meditation is actually a method to purify the mind. Okay. Now, how do you purify the mind? You give it an object. You give it an object to concentrate on. Of course, first you prepare yourself with a correct lifestyle, with sitting still, with breathing proper, all that is a preparation. But meditation proper involves choosing an object which you can fix your mind on. And you practice fixing your mind on this again and again. That is the abhyas, right? As you do that, and as you also watch your thoughts, what happens is the thoughts decrease slowly over a period of time, of course. Okay, yeah, when they decrease, the mind is now becoming its, its innate self, natural self. What is that? It's becoming pure. It's becoming transparent. So that is the purpose. So the purpose would be to make your mind a transparent, like a mirror. 
when your mind becomes like a mirror, you will not misunderstand anything in life. Everything will be reflected very nicely. If your friend says something, you will never, there'll never be a misunderstanding. If your boss says something, you'll never misunderstand. Everything will be accurately reflected in this mirror. So the mind becomes a mirror. The second thing is, the mind becomes like a laser beam. So it penetrates inside and goes to its deepest levels, which the otherwise we cannot reach. Okay? So Sri Krishna says in the Gita, Krishna says, your mind is your best friend and your mind is your worst enemy. Yeah. With the help of your mind, you lift up yourself. And if your mind is not with you, you will degrade yourself. So you have to first understand the mind and learn how to purify it by giving it an object which and giving it the practice or the abhyas of coming back to this object again and again. So you have to choose the right object. Like you said, okay, how do you do a correct practice? You've decided to meditate. You live a healthy life. You do some pranayama, do all the steps. You learn to sit still. Then you give the mind an object. That object has to be chosen. So what do you think the object can be? <clears throat> uh, object should be definitely which already uh, which already has that uh, that level of frequency right which is already vibrating as you know we are talking about sounds and waves so which is already vibrating at that frequency at high frequency so it can be a sound like om what else can it be it can be a an a murti or yes, the feet of the Lord. what else it can be your own body. You can concentrate on your own body. Or like you do it on your mind. So that is also a kind of meditation. You are actually concentrating with the mind on the mind. So the mind becomes the object or your breath. So these are the various objects. You pick up one object, make a practice of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, morning, evening. Just that much, only 10 minutes and try doing it. So ma'am, can we not say that med that meditation is also a, a kind of observation? Yes, it includes observation, but it is not just observation. Yes. It is much more like we have discussed. It includes one of the aspects is observation, mm -hmm. but to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. It is also to know meditation will help you to reach yoga you'll finally have a crystal clarity about everything, including the object and including the universe. Okay? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So can we say that uh, that meditation helps us to understand our self-identity? As you, uh, you know, told us earlier, that uh, it all starts with self. When yeah. we know ourselves, so can we say that that meditation helps us to uh, understand our own identity to make us realize who we really are so we no longer identify ourselves as uh, as the roles that we play as the positions we are at or as you know the mother daughter and so on so can yes, you absolutely absolutely so all these false identities which we are caught in is sansar you know this is what causes all the uh, suffering finally it may give you pleasure also but it causes a lot of turmoil meditation is you're saying to realize to understand but it goes beyond understanding you have a true identity meditation makes you that it doesn't make you understand that it makes you that tattvamasi you are that you don't have you have to see you have to understand a book or some words because that's not you but with yourself you have to be it so you become it and then you function from that dimension in your daily life also. Then there is no mother and daughter. That's yeah. a good example because it's, it troubles everyone. So <clears throat> there is no, uh, I mean, then your near and dear one is just another soul. All souls are near and dear and you don't get specially distressed or disappointed with, uh, you know, uh, the person who's close to you. Yes, it's a turmoil everyone faces. Okay. So ma'am, before we go to the next question, I would ask viewers that they can uh, ask their questions as well in the comment section yes, below. Sir. So our next question uh, is, uh, uh, how, how much a role, how, what is the role of a diet and exercise uh, play in healing? 
Correct. So, uh, you know, in the eight steps, we have yama niyama, the don'ts and the do's. So one of the do's would be tapas. Tapas means purity of the self. And purity of the self is achieved mainly, according to Patanjali and the commentaries, by diet. So diet is very important. The kind of food you eat and uh, how much you eat, what is your attitude towards the food, all that is included in diet, right? So eating the appropriate stuff, which is appropriate. Now, a person who is doing a desk job or a person who is lifting heavy weights will need to eat different kind of stuff, isn't it? So according to your occupation, your age, and according to the weather, the season, you know, all that, what should you eat? All that is included in diet. And yes, that's important too. So is exercise because exercise keeps your body supple. You should be able to sit in an asana. No? If your back is aching, your joints are aching, how will you sit if you're not, if you don't have a flexible, nice, pliable body? So yes, exercise will improve the blood supply to your muscles and give your muscles strength and the usual, that is the usual advantages that everybody knows about exercise, right? <clears throat> Ma'am, uh, I'm moving to the other question. It is, uh, should we take the uh, help of an expert like you, of course, uh, while starting to chant mantras to make sure if we are doing it right or not? Uh, yes, I, I think one should. Because, you know, you can't just pick up, you know, picking up an over-the-counter medicine. You can't even go to the chemist and pick up any medicine. That's, and that's not correct. And this is even more individualized a mantra because we are looking at the energy of the person. So you need a teacher who understands the psyche and who understands the body to sit with you, listen to your patterns and decide which mantra you need and then teach you how to pronounce that mantra properly and how to intone it in the correct swara. Once that is done, then the teacher can teach you how to use the mantra with breath, or with your fingers, you know, you place the mantra on your fingers, fingertips, or your body parts. So <clears throat> there are different ways in which the mantra will then, then the teacher will teach you how to use it. Now, using the mantra with the breath is extremely useful <clears throat> because when you inhale, can you chant when you inhale? Let's try Om. Just try to chant Om. Can you chant when you inhale? No. You can't. You chant when you exhale. So the mantra lengthens your exhalation. And when it makes your exhalation long, that relaxes you. It also stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system, which causes slowing and healing, rest and healing. So this way, the mantra can be used, you know, with breath also, with nyasa, and you can also meditate on the mantra. So these are the various ways you can build up a home practice, but it's always good to have a teacher who can help you to choose the correct mantra because if you land up just picking up any random mantra, you might be picking up something you don't need, Absolutely. which doesn't benefit you. Yeah. So ma'am, as uh, you were talking about the breathing, so uh, is it, can we say that that breathing affects our, uh, our state of mind or state of mood or can we change our state of mind by different uh, patterns of breathing or can we say that through pranayama? Yes, of course. You know, I think you know the answer. So, yes, your breath is a very important, uh, you know, thread which is linked to your mind. It, it is actually the connecting bridge between your body and your mind. Your breath affects every aspect of your personality, right? So if you feel you're very agitated or you're very anxious, then if you sit down and you breathe and you breathe out very slowly, so you breathe in to a count of say three and you breathe out to a count of six, or if you are at home, if you can sit, Breathe in, and when you breathe out, you chant Om. Okay, try doing it. Just try doing it. So <clears throat> you breathe in, and you breathe out, you chant Om, and feel the vibration. So breathe in with your tummy. Take a deep breath. Now slowly breathe out, chant Om. Breathe out, chant Om. Yeah, so this was the first time. So as you keep doing it, you'll gain more confidence and more control 
over your breath and the exhalation. Okay. Sure, ma'am. So, ma'am, moving to the uh, next question, ma'am. Uh, what is the ideal duration one should con consider for uh, meditation? Duration of time in the day. That's a tricky question. It would vary from individual to individual. For you, 10 minutes would be enough. For me, at my stage and age, I think I should be doing lots and lots. So it all depends <clears throat> on the person, their stage, etc. Okay, so uh, commonly, like everyone is... For a normal person and an average person, 10 minutes morning, 10 minutes evening, after some pranayama, after the asana, some stretching asana and pranayama. If you have an object of meditation and you practice meditation for 10, 15 minutes morning, I think that would be very nice if you can do it twice a day. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, it does. Of course. Sure, ma'am. Uh, hmm. Ma'am, how can one stay actually positive through life's most challenging times? Oh, Baba. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so see, these are the tools which are available to us. And uh, just a kind of mindfulness. See, suppose you're going through a turmoil, you know, then at that moment, instead of shoving it under the carpet, suppressing the feelings, mindfulness at that moment helps a lot. So don't shove anything under the carpet. Don't try to ignore it or suppress it. Bring it out and just be there, be mindful of it. That itself will start dissolving that acute reaction which you are having, right? Besides that, of course, all these things we have been talking about, uh, the correct way of living, swadhyaya. Swadhyaya means chanting mantras, you know, mantras always, say, suppose you realize, suppose I realize that my perceptions are not clear. I get very emotional. I don't perceive correct and then I feel bad. So then I need to do an Indra mantra. Indra means clear mind. So these mantras also represent some quality within you. Okay. Some kind of a faculty. Devata kya hai? Devata is only an energy of a particular kind. Like Lakshmi is an energy of abundance and prosperity. So by using the correct Bija Mantra for that energy, you may be able to cultivate that, uh, that kind of an attitude within you. So these are various ways. So by using Vedic Mantras, by using uh, all the eight steps of Patanjali, you can always try to transform yourself. That is the whole purpose of the spiritual practice is actually transformation, nothing but that, no? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I request viewers to continue asking their questions. Uh, our session is really going very interesting. So, ma'am, moving to the next question. Ma'am, are there any specific mantras for uh, specific problems, both mental and physical? <clears throat> See, there are some mantras which are universal, which will benefit you, which you can use you just have to know how to intone them and you use them. For example, Om. Okay. So Om is an all-purpose mantra. It will protect you. It will heal you, all your body, etc. Now, Om has got three parts. A, Uma. You know that? So Om actually has three parts. You chant it as Om, but it's actually three syllables. A, U, and Ma. So each of them has got a power. Like if you do ah, uh, that has a different power. If you do ooh and um, if you even do the different syllables, each of them has got a different effect. You try it. Yes, so sound, yeah. yeah, it has a different sound itself has got an effect. And there will be no harm ever coming to you if you do this mantra. Similarly, so hum. So if you do so hum with the breath, breathe in. You say so in your mentally and when you breathe out, you say hum, sit and do it for a little while. It will balance your prana in the body. And when it balances your prana, you can face the crisis which you were just talking about. Gayatri Mantra is another mantra, which is a, it is a universal mantra. Om Namah Shivaya. You can just sit and do Namah Shivaya. So you can start Na at the base of the body, then ma. So you know chakras. So you just 
take every syllable at a chakra from below upwards. So, Nama Shivaya. So, that way you can chant very calmly. You can chant Nama Shivaya. So, you can pick up any universal mantra. You can do that. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, we are coming up with a question. Is this, can we chant mantras while going about our usual day? Or as you know, nowadays people say that they are always strapped for time. So, mm -hmm. is that possible? Yes, you can. So that would be like a japa, right? Yes. So you are not really chanting, you're repeating the mantra. Mm -hmm. So chanting would be with, you know, sitting and chanting properly with all the intonation and the... Oh, yes. You are continuously repeating and rotating the mantra and repeating it. Yes, you can. Why not? So it will have the same effect as when we chant the mantra while sitting in a proper room with all, you know, calming no, our body. It's better, it's better to, uh, you know, to really get the vibratory benefit. I think you should sit and do it with a breath and do it very mindfully. But if you are wanting, see, there are different things. Suppose your the mantra itself, every mantra has a shakti in it. What is shakti? Power. Okay. So the power is trapped in the mantra. Sometimes some people want to realize that power. Like stream is the mantra for prosperity. So they want to realize that power of prosperity. So they keep repeating it. In that case, it's okay. You keep repeating it and the repetition will cause the energy to emerge from that akshar. So yes, in that case, you can. It would help you. But if you want the vibration and you want to really absorb the vibration and be healed, then you should sit and chant it. It's definitely more beneficial. Ma'am, is there, can we say that uh, mental chanting, does that help us when we just mentally focusing on the mantra? Or... Yes. yes, so that is japa. Like I said, japa is to repeat, no? Like suppose you're doing Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. You're taking a mala and you're doing it. Yes. Now, in that case, you're just repeating. You're not saying Namah Shivaya. You're not saying that. You're just repeating Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, and you're using a mala. Or maybe you're counting on your fingers. Okay, there are various ways to count. So in that case, you're repeating the mantra. What was your question? Would you like to repeat it? Uh, Ma'am, I was asking, what about the mental chanting? Does yes. that really help? Now, this japa is going to help you to meditate. And when you are doing a japa, now you start loudly. Say you do 30 times, you do loudly. Then you do whisper and then you you're, you know you're really concentrating and you then you do it in your mind so that will really quieten your mind it's very potent in quieting quietening your mind so yes you can manasik japa would be nice but first do loud then do whisper then do manasik so it's a stage it's the process through a, a process, process we a reach process. this what are you trying to do you're trying to outwit the mind you are trying to be more intelligent than the mind, your own mind. Yeah. Transform. Then you get the mind to listen to the whisper, concentrate, and then the soft one, the, then the mental one. So the mind quietens. You are actually finding all tools to get the mind to go with it. Isn't it? Yes, of course. Yeah. course. Ma'am, yeah. uh, please let us know uh, the mantras to control our, you know, when we get anger all of a, instantly and ir get irritated instantly on a day-to-day basis. And how yeah. should we do it quickly to gain our calmness back? So you you want a tablet crocin SOS. So, so it, 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 you know, I don't think it works like that. However, there are mantras. Like I said, Om, Gayatri Mantra, Namah Shivaya, Mrityunjaya. These are all universal. You can do them. Krodh ke liye, for anger... What do you do? Om is good. Om is good. And you can also do some cooling mantra like the moon mantras. Chandra. You know, moon is very calming, no? If you look at the full moon or the moon in the sky, don't you feel calm? Moon has a calming influence. So you do Chandra mantras. So you can do um, uh, Om Sam Chandra Yanamaha. You can also visualize, uh, you know, an uh, evening sky and you can visualize the full moon. Also, if you visualize, now this is something I've tried. 
if you visualize shiva sitting with the crescent moon on his head so then you do om shri chandra shekharaya namaha very nice mantra and visualizing shiva with the ganges falling and the crescent moon cools you down <laughs> so you just again do a creative visualization do a chandra mantra that is good for anger Ma'am, as the Gayatri mantra is very common, so uh, what is the right way to chant Gayatri mantra? Okay, so the Gayatri mantra is very common, and I think it's very beautiful because it is not just a mantra; it is also a prayer. It is also a positive affirmation that that we are making, and it's our communication with the cosmos, right? So, how does it go? Oh. भूभुवस्सुभा तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यं भर्गो देवस्य धीमहि धियो यो न प्रचोदयात् डूइंग इट नोइंग द मीनिंग वुड बी वंडरफुल सो तत्सवितुर तत्सवितुर दैट एडोरेबल sun which sun of the atma each one of us has got this brilliant sun of the atma in our heart so that adorable sun tatsavitur the only one who is worth adoring okay varenyam bhargo devasya dhimahi may its divine light burn all my past karma bhargo scorch and bhargo devasya dhimahi dhiyo yona prachodyat we meditate on that sun and we pray to it to uh, stimulate and awaken and activate our faculties so it's the ultimate prayer because we have a lot of faculties we have a lot of intelligence we have a lot of power but it needs to be stimulated so this is that let me do what i have been born for let me awaken so it's a beautiful uh, mantra to be done every day Sure, ma'am. That was very beautiful. I have one more question, then after we will be wrapping up this session, ma'am. Uh, it is from uh, Patanjali, the the third chapter of Patanjali. I am very curious to know, as you know, in the first two chapters of Yoga Sutras, it is the things have been written very uh, simply and very clearly. But in the third chapter, uh, everything that has been said and written was uh, how how would you like to uh, explain that? Yeah, so I would say first. The, so you have already uh, read the first two chapters, but they still require to be read with the teacher and understood. I still need to understand them at times. I still turn to my teachers. So it's not so very, let's say, not so simplistic to decode Patanjali Yoga Sutras. And the first two chapters is the first chapter is Samadhi Pada. Yes. It talks about that state, the different kinds of samadhis, which itself is so interesting. and then we come to the sadhana path how to do it yes and the third chapter which you talk about is about the siddhis the powers the powers so it's very interesting so read it slowly it is about the powers gained by the yogi when he concentrates does various concentrations and meditations not so very important at our stage so i think we need to first understand the first two chapters learn how to apply them and then you can read the third chapter and the fourth chapter for your own interest yes so basically when a yogi uh, achieves that state so he achieves all those powers which are defined in uh, the guru yes. he might achieve one power so it talks about all the multitude and the whole diversity of powers which he some a person may achieve one or two or whatever you can't say that all the powers come to one person it depends suppose a person is concentrating on the pit of their throat or if a, a person is always speaking the truth then they get vak shakti if a person is always speaking the truth they get the shakti of the word whatever they say happens right someone is never telling a lie then whatever they utter will happen so be careful they don't curse you mm -hmm. you know so that is a power now that person will not get the power to enter a dead body that's not the power for that there must be another sutra so it depends on what practice you are doing and what power you have actualized okay absolutely mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much ma'am this has been a great session with you and you have uh, enlightened us with so many mantras on a daily basis and on stress and 
that everyone is that going through. So thank you so much. It's been a great session with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Can I end with an invocation? A yes, of course. Okay. So I'll in, uh, end with Purnamada. We are complete and we are whole within us, no matter what happens. Okay. Oh, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachyate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva. शिष्यते ओ शांति 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल द बेस्ट वेरी वेरी थैंक यू ओम शांति थैंक यू